doesn't have a lid. Ooh. Blood, plasma, blood, plasma. I'm so tired of sitting here. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine. And today, I'm going to be taking you along with me on my way to work. Um, I've actually been back to work since yesterday. So it's been kind of crazy um, being back after everything. Right now, it's 7.10, or actually 7.15, so I should probably get going. But I will talk to you guys more once I get there. See you guys there. Yo, what's up everyone? I am at work right now. In today's vlog, I wanted to take you guys with me to work. Um, I was going to try and film my morning routine, but then I realized I left this camera in my car. So, um, enjoy this picture of me eating bread. <laughs> but, um, right now it's about 7.30. We don't start until 8, so I have a little bit of time. I brought this oolong tea in this cup that doesn't have a lid. Um, it's my second day coming back, obviously. I totally forgot how hard it is to park within a parking structure. Um, at my previous job, it was a very like small hospital, so it was just like one level floor. But this one has like this big parking garage. It's good for like the members, but it's like so hard to like park as an employee because they make you park on like the higher level. I'm like so tired from yesterday's shift. I don't even know why. I think it's just because I haven't worked a 12 hour shift in a really long time. Um, but our shifts are from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Which is like pretty nice when you think about it. Like those are pretty normal hours and you take into consideration if you're up at those normal hours so is everyone else. So it's a pretty busy shift but I'd much rather have a busy shift and have weird sleep um, hours. Normally, during my um, quarantine, I was just waking up at like six in the morning anyways. One thing that's like way different here is how we change our scrubs. So I don't even think it's worth changing my, my scrubs because at my old job, it was like they set some out for you and then you put it on. Here, it's like this big, it's called like a scrub X machine. You have to get like your badge registered and then they tell you or you put in your um, sizes and then from there it'll give you the scrub size that you need and it only gives you one pair and there's no jacket which is weird maybe you can ask for one my other job it was like so easy especially if you soiled your scrubs you could just change it out really quick but here it's like into like the scrub X machine I'm not even gonna change my scrubs anymore I'm just like over it it takes like way too much time. I just like having the option, so I don't know what kind of construction they're trying to do. Yesterday was quite a busy day. Um, the ratios here are technically three to one. Um, and then usually what happens is we don't end up having a break nurse. So what happens is you disperse your patients amongst the people in your pod. There's like four to a pod. So there's three pods, A, B, and C. And then whenever you go on break, you're supposed to disperse it amongst your colleagues. It's bed one, you take by three, you take by four. So that that way you can go on break because all your patients are covered. It's not a very efficient way to do breaks because obviously not much will be done for your patients, I feel like. The biggest issue here is, I think everywhere in general, is we're holding patients like crazy and they get stuck in the ER for like I had someone stuck there for 58 hours, three days. I bet you he's still here, and I can tell you right now. It's because the skilled nursing facilities that these patients are supposed to go to aren't taking the patients. I also am wearing these. Uh, ugh. I never really like to wear my compression socks on my way to work, just because I just really don't like it, not my thing but yeah anyway I'm gonna get ready for my socks and then my scrub cap 
gonna enjoy the rest of my tea and start mentally preparing for the shift. This is technically my last day of orientation, but I think I'm gonna ask to extend it. The training is supposed to be six shifts, but they cut it down to three, especially because I took that really big gap of time between my first and my second shift. So I'd rather do the I'd rather do three more shifts, to be honest with you. I feel like I'd be a lot more acclimated to the environment. Yeah, there's some guy blow driving something, so I'm just gonna go. I'll see you guys. Ooh. Okay, what's up, everyone? I'm on my break. Don't mind this, it's just my orange. What is this over here? I'm gonna have my 15. I remember yesterday we didn't even get a 15, so it just kind of fluctuates depending on the pace of the day. Um, but so far, I'm not really hating working weekends. I think the pace is a little bit nicer. Plus, I have nothing better to do with my life right now anyway. Um, cause, oh, Alex is also gonna be starting EMT um, classes cause he wanted to do like some sort of like patient care to help him with his job. Stay tuned for that because I convinced Alex to vlog that. I think it'll be helpful information, but Right now, I hope today is a good day. It's my like one of two, and then I'm off, and then I'm back. I also got a coffee from my break room. I'm gonna drink that as well, and then I'll talk to you guys later. So, for lunch, we have all this junk because I'm a fat ass. And this is what I was supposed to eat yesterday some show pow, which is like um, some sort of bun with meat some shomai and the salad oh my god i just took my freaking cap off and look i look like a crazy person but good news oh she's gonna go shower tonight so it doesn't really matter now i just wear my cap just because of the fact that i don't like to have my hair snagged by the n95 but i'm gonna go home i'll talk to you guys a little bit later but i was telling alex there's this i don't know if we'll pass it but you can see like the blue light fixture there's this big pillar I'm not gonna show it probably because actually now that I'm thinking about it, I shouldn't show people where I work. But there's this big light fixture there and I remember passing by it whenever I had gotten my echo. God, I look like a potato. Um, but I remember going to it and I was like so amazed. I was like, wow, I really need to start applying to like nicer hospitals. <laughs> and then that night I applied and the next day they called me. So it was a sign, literally. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the vlog. It's actually the next morning. I got way too tired to vlog later on that night. I know I said I was gonna vlog when I got home, but I just got like so tired and I just like ate a little bit and then I took a shower and passed out. It's just been a while since I've done 12 hour shifts, so it feels like so weird coming back. Ow, I burned my tongue on that. I don't know if you can see it, it's like piping hot. But I did want to summarize how everything's going in terms of work. It's bizarre, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, it's such a different flow compared to our normal flow of ER. I think this is happening at every single ER. I don't think it's necessarily this particular. I think we're just running out of beds. I think what's happening is, the reality is we have 36 beds and 23 of those when we walked in at eight in the morning were holding meaning those patients did not have beds to go up to or to transfer out into. And what that means is if we have only 36 beds and there's 23 occupied that are not moving at any time soon, it essentially means you only have 13 ER beds for this hospital. Honestly, it's not that bad compared to some other places. We're supposed to have 36 and we only have 13. That's a big, big problem. Their structure is so different. Oh my God. I didn't, at the end of the day, the a lot of things are the same. Remember in our ER, we would have to take the physical paperwork and bring it upstairs. Here, everything's electronic, so it's like you literally just pack up all the patient's belongings and then you go, which is nice. Um, but things that are different, it's like literally like five doctors in the ER. 
and there's constantly consults and oh my god like it's so hard to track down these doctors i used to work at my old hospital it's like our doctors were their dictation room was right next to the nursing station whenever we'd have criticals whenever we'd have any concerns or whatever we would just literally walk in there and talk to them but it's so hard to track them down here like you have to call them it's like it feels like i'm like a floor nurse because i don't have i don't know it's just something you have to get used to i don't know i thought that i thought that i worked at a medium size er no i'm pretty sure the one i'm working at right now is considered a medium size um because the one i worked at before was like probably maximum like 25 beds if we really extended it out and then we have like a bunch of hallway beds that we would use sometimes but here it's um way different and it's nice for the patients because they're all these really big like glass rooms which is so so nice like i hate curtain rooms i think it's super gross and it's super unsafe because someone with toe pain you could stick in a curtain room and then they end up having covid and that's just disgusting especially back in the day when it used to be like oh just like abdominal pain we would stick them in the curtain rooms and they'd come back covid it was so gross so i'm glad that they have like these enclosed rooms for every patient because i think that's a lot safer there's just so many different things that are it's just hard to grasp um, yeah, it just it's a lot of charting in comparison to my other job. Their charting is insane. It's a completely different system. It's charting the same things, doing the same things, but it's on a different system. And a lot of things they don't teach you in nursing school is like how to chart. I didn't really know how to um, navigate any type of system other than like charting vitals, but nobody gives a shit about that. But yesterday's shift wasn't that bad. It's just really hard because the fact is this isn't our normal flow of the ER. And eventually one day we'll go back to the normal flow, but right now, literally all we do is hold patients. Like I was turning patients and cleaning them and I gave, oh my God, the COVID patients get like, she was like bleeding. And then we also gave her like, plasma and convalescent plasma because that's what we give for covid patients blood plasma blood plasma i'm so tired of sitting here and charting their like you know you have to stay with them for 15 minutes to make sure that they don't have a reaction you have to do their temps like two minutes after and it's like so annoying and, I'm like, and you can't run them at the same time because what if they have a reaction you don't know which one it's going to be from and then the thing is even if you have two patients holding you do have that third room open so technically any runs can go in there, any um, triage patients can go in there. You're half ER nurse and half floor nurse, and it's a weird flipping between the two. I, I can't really complain about yesterday though, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. The day before, like, one of our patients, like, passed away, and I- Honestly, have you ever seen a troponin at 92? Because I haven't. That's the highest freaking troponin I have ever seen in my life. But yeah, that's how my orientation's going so far. I don't know, I'm, I'm really, really scared about what's gonna happen after the holidays because even though I'm okay after COVID, a lot of people won't be okay. I saw a bunch of people meet and have these parties and you can't stop them and that's the reality. But I, like people say, you can only help one patient at a time. And every day you just take it literally one foot in front of the other. And that's all you can do. We can't save everyone. We're getting all this influx of patients with COVID and God, like it's not, for some people like me, like I had such mild symptoms, but for other people, it really takes them down. How has everyone who has gotten COVID been doing? Especially people who, who had like very severe symptoms. Some people were saying that even after they recover from COVID, they run up a fl flight of stairs and they get winded but i felt like i was always kind of winded like even though i do a bunch of cardio i would always still kind of be tired if i walked up the stairs i don't know maybe i'm out of shape it's gonna be it for today's vlog i'm gonna go work out a little bit today today's my off day um i'm off for two then back on for another two or three i don't remember um but yeah that's gonna be it for today's vlog I hope you guys enjoyed and I'm gonna try to keep vlogging because I didn't really vlog that much during vlogmas. Thank you guys so much for all the comments and everything. I really appreciate every single one of you and I will see you guys in the next vlog.